Today, every day, small cap investors visit Agoracom knowing this is the day to discover the world's next great company, to have their dreams come true. That's why I take to the open road, to find them, to tell their stories, to engage them, to bring them to life. Because they want to connect with you from your office, your phone, your home, anywhere. Agoracom, find your dream. Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives about what's happening at their companies. With us today, I'm happy to have for the first time ever, Barney Lash. He's Vice President of Sales, newly appointed at Star Navigation Systems. The company trades on the, on the CSC under the stock symbol SNA, and for our friends in the U.S., on the QB under SNAVF. Now, for those of you who are new to the story, and I know a lot of shareholders are watching, but there are a lot of new Agoracom people watching as well, uh, Star Navigation is a developer of real-time worldwide tracking and monitoring systems for airplanes. Their clients include commercial airlines, regional, and business aircraft operators. The purpose of the software is twofold from a business point of view to create greater efficiencies in the sky and use of these planes, but at the same time to prevent situations like MH370 the airline that went down that nobody can locate. This is worldwide tracking in real time. Second of all, the company has entered a flat panel LCD display and control unit market. This is for aerospace and defense operators, more than just lip service. Some of their clients include Lockheed Martin, CAE, and North of Grunman, Grunman, Italy, just to name a couple. So they're doing some really great things there. Barney is here to talk to us about everything going on at Star. Now, Barney, what I find interesting about the press release is that you actually already have eight years of extensive work with Star. Uh, you know, what have you been doing with Star Navigation this long, and then how are you transitioning to, into this next role? Well, eight years ago, uh, we were working with uh, Astrium, which is actually Airbus now, and I was a liaison person uh, between Astrium and Star. So my history with the beginnings of putting the entire system together with Astrium went back to those days. Uh, since Astrium and Star uh, parted ways, um, we've continued our efforts. Uh, we've rebuilt from what we actually created with Astrium, and today we're ready to go. Uh, we've got the full system operational, and moving forward, uh, we're looking at some sales starting now. And that's what I find very positive, because a lot of times, no matter how good of a sales guy you may have been in a prior life, when you come on with a company, I gotta tell you, and for everyone at home, it could take a good year to get up to speed, especially with uh, software and hardware as uh, sophisticated as what Star Navigation has, before you really get comfortable with the product, before you really get comfortable with the marketplace. But you've already been there for eight years, and uh, and it sounds like things are already starting start to heat up. So talk to me about what kind of sales you see potentially coming already that you just mentioned in your last answer. Well. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did an interview with Junaid, if you recall. Uh, sure. We were talking about the medevac system. And with Junaid, uh, we had basically expressed that we were sending uh, information on a simulation uh, and everything was working okay. So from there, what we've done is we've run that data uh, up to a satellite. We've sent it back down to the ground. And what we are now seeing is the full information, the way that we've sent it up, the same way coming down. And with Medevac, that is an absolute must. And very happy to say, very happy to report to you that this has now been completed. Uh, we've done it. We've done it through GSM. We've done it through our modem. And as we're talking right now, um, the only things that we're going to be needing further is the first uh, vehicle that we're going to be putting on is going to be a helicopter. We will need an STC for that, and we will need some health approval. Other than that, we're ready to go. Now, before we get off to the to the uh, you know the jurisdictional approvals and things like that, that's that's pretty amazing because Janaid was here maybe more than a couple of weeks ago, but it was all sim simulated, almost lab. 
And he was pretty confident that, you know, lab success was going to involve real world success. But what you're telling us here today is you've got real world uh, success in transmitting ground, satellite, back down, all displaying the way exactly as it should be. That is absolutely correct. And uh, the most amazing thing, when we take a look at this, let's go back a year when we created the G3 for our VVIP aircraft. That unit, the SSU server G3, is fully certified, STC'd by Transport Canada, and perhaps a week away from FAA approval. So you take a look at that, plus you take a look at the health monitor. The health monitor itself is approved by Health Canada. It's also approved in the United States, FDA approved. So what we're looking at is we're looking at just sending the information from the health monitor that's attached to the patient on an aircraft flying 45,000 feet or a helicopter that's flying 3,000 feet. And we're capable of sending that information ground, uh, sorry, from the satellite to the ground. So Barney, what it sounds like is you've already got approvals for the hardware, uh, our hardware up, hardware down. You're just, you just need to get approved for the transmittal in between. Is that as easy as it sounds? Um, that's something that we're going to have to find out about because this is something that's new territory for stars, new territory for me. Um, however, I will tell you that we are working very strongly with a hospital in Quebec, uh, St. Augustine, that is helping us with the monitor, supplying us uh, with information, and we're also working with a couple of other medical uh, companies in the aviation business, and everybody's willing to help us out. We have tremendous support. I'm assuming that support has come from the fact that the industry really needs and wants this. Well, it's interesting that you say that because from the information that we've been putting out, the Janaid video that we had put out there, um, when we take a look at you know the sales aspect of going out and finding customers, we're not finding customers. They're coming to us. They're asking us. They're coming to us and saying, how can I help? They're coming to us and say, I want in. Um, it's, it's an amazing feeling to have, this has got to be like from a VP of sales point of view. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty, uh, I got to admit, that's why I love doing these interviews because when you, you can hear the voice, see the body language, and you're clearly pretty happy about what's going on. Let's talk a little more then about your plans as VP of sales, you know, globally for the, for the star system and the other beyond medevac. What are you looking to do there? You know, generally speaking, I know you can't give away the whole, the whole kitchen sink, but what's your action plan there? Well, let me kind of explain it this way. Um, past history in what I've been involved in sales, I've seen rapid uh, movement in sales if you take a certain direction. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at selling territories. Star Navigation does not have a sales team. So what I'm looking at is I have interested parties right now who are interested in buying territories in where they will be the distributor. And I'll, I'll just say it this way. I'm, I'm looking at four different segments. I'm looking at ground. So I'm looking at emergency vehicles on the ground. I'm looking at helicopters fixed wing for emergency services. I'm looking at commercial airlines. I'm looking at military. Right. Those four different segments, I can actually sell one segment um, for the province of Ontario. Um, an individual who's interested in, in purchasing those rights. I have someone who's interested in purchasing the rights to commercial airlines and medical uh, aviation. So from there, I'm looking at this and saying, okay, if I'm going to sell a territory for this amount, let's just say that I, I sell a province or I sell the country, or I go into the States and I'm selling a state or I'm selling the entire country, depending on obviously who that investor is, who that distributor is, what their credentials are. We need to vet them out and make sure that they're the right people, of course. Um, but this has been met with several inquiries um, already who are looking at getting the rights to, to do this. And I'm glad you brought that up because I got to tell you, the one uh, chink in the armor for Star Navigation, which by the way is something for a lot of companies that 
have a mass product like this. You're not selling something that's geography specific or software that you could just, I mean, this is, this is, this is hardware software and you got to deal with, you know, big commercial airlines, military. There's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of things you have to get through. These are slow sales cycles. Uh, if, if you don't, if you're not already there. And I was always concerned that how is star going to deploy a big enough of a network? How expensive would that be? How long would it take to have a sales cycle? But this is a great, this, this is a great uh, revelation here that you want to sell territories to people who already have these customers. And I'm assuming sales plus, uh, you know, you sell the territory and collect royalties. Um, we, we have a certain price that we're going to be charging the distributor and the distributor in turn is going to put their percentage on top to the end customer. Um, for me to take a look at the industry and where we are as far as ICAO requirements over the next year and a half and to be able to, you know, meet the demands of airlines, I know right now that if I was going to try and build a team to do that as star on our own, I know I would not be able to do that, not and meet the requirements, the time requirements that we're looking at. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's a big problem for a lot of smaller organizations. So I'm absolutely. glad that you're telling me though that beyond just thinking you're gonna sell territories, you've already got people calling you to buy territories. That is correct. Eddie, I'll I'm gonna try and put you on the hot seat here because I can feel people at home probably asking the same thing right now. So I'm gonna ask it, which yeah. is are you confident that you'll be able uh, that you'll be able to have some territory sold in 2018? Very confident, extremely okay. confident. I asked you, and that's going to be great for everyone at, for everyone at home. Uh, there was also a press release recently uh, in, regarding Baraf and uh, and uh, exercising his patent rights and and enforcing them. Uh, would do you think that's going to help in these efforts? Does that help? Has that already helped bring the distributors in because they know that they're going to have not just patented product, but uh, you know, an enforced patented product? Uh, very much so. Um, when we take a look at the uh, Capadia patent, number one, uh, it very specifically um, goes towards medic, medic, uh, medevac type of uh, situation. The entire patent describes the process on how that information and how that data is going to come down. Um, when we take a look at the medevac specifically where it says we're going to be doing this with a patient on an aircraft or on a moving vehicle sending this information via satellite uh, that is very clearly covered so when i take a look at that type of a situation um, this is something that you know that our system already takes information from an aircraft and we send it through the satellite to the ground that in itself we know that you know there already are some infringements. We're not we're not here to put people out of business or anything like that. I don't think that's Veraf's intent. No. I think what we're looking at is, hey guys, you're infringing. You need to pay a royalty. Um, you know, take it from there. And I can't get into who or what, but um, hey, it's in the lawyers' hands, and you know what the lawyers go after. It's always the money, right? And I love how you anticipated by answering in advance. I can't tell you who or what because I was not going to ask. <laughs> Any indication of who might be doing, who might be infringing on that right now? I'm a um, quick learner, Joe. <laughs> question or statement, which is, it feels like for the first time that Star is, it's, I mean, it's always going to be in R&D mode. It's always going to be updating its software and hardware. We know that. Definitely. But it sounds like for the first time, the balance is really shifting over to the commercialization side. It is. And there's a, there's a slide um, that I hope that we can put on uh, when we're taking a look at this and I'll kind of describe this slide. It's, it's basically a screen and the screen is going to be broken up into four segments and this is what's going to appear in a hospital in front of a doctor when they're actually receiving our information. So the first quadrant is going to show the bio uh, information, the bio data of the patient. The second screen beside that is actually going to show uh, the GPS, where is that patient what altitude are they at? Uh, how long is it going to take for that person to get to a hospital, whether it's in a ground vehicle or where are you on an aircraft, that type of thing. The third quadrant on the bottom left is going to be information that the hospital is going to be able to actually pull in the data from that particular patient. So when you have that patient data, when you have that uh, bio data, when you have the data where, where that patient is, there's the fourth quadrant, 
And this fourth quadrant is actually going to be the part that we're continuously looking to upgrade. And this is only going to happen, the, the last uh, part of that four piece is going to be us sending data in video in, from the patient to the doctor. So currently our modems are not fast enough to yeah, handle that. That's pump. a lot, that's a lot of that's a lot of bandwidth. It is. However, the most interesting news is that uh, Iridium Next is going to have a modem ready by the end of this year. I'm 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 thinking sometime around November, October, November. And those modems are capable of transmitting information 150 times faster than we can do it today. So okay. video is going to be, by the end of the year, we hope to incorporate the video aspect of this into the system as well. So you're talking about constant, you know, R&D? Oh yeah, for sure. This is, this is an absolute, you know, engineer's dream. Janae's happy. <laughs> Cross R&D, but now we've got a, com a strong commercialization aspect to it as well. And it sounds like uh, and I said before, I know I said it's going to be my last comment, but, you know, we don't preset all these questions. We go with the flow here. Sure. And it sounds like Medivac is going to be quicker out of the shoot on the commercialization side. So we're, you're still going to continue. Am I assessing this correctly? You're still going to continue the worldwide tracking software, the STAR, the true four star technology oh. everyone knows about. But Medivac is going to be much more nimble, agile, and faster in generating revenue for the company. Absolutely. And let me put it this way. ICAL has put out a mandate, it's GADS. And in order to be GADS compliant, you have to have reporting on an aircraft where it is every 15 minutes. But by 2020, it has to be, I can't remember the time frame, three, five minutes, whatever. So when you take a look at our ISMS system and you take a look at what we can do on an aircraft. So we're on the aircraft and we're sending the data via satellite to a ground station on a graphical user interface where the end user can basically tell the health of their aircraft. At the same time, with the same equipment, by adding a health monitor to a patient who can be on a flight, that that patient will be able to be having data, very important data, which is going to determine to, uh, from the doctor to the pilot saying, man, I think you have to turn this aircraft around because we have a very serious situation on our hands right, right. and you've got to turn it around and you've got to land as soon as possible. Or it's not a serious situation. You don't need to worry about turning around and incurring that massive expense of altering the flight and diverting the flight. You can keep going. George is okay. Uh, we can deal with them and we can deal with them in two hours when you get here. You're absolutely correct. And let me give you a few numbers. If we take a look at the amount of people flying in 2017, it was 3 billion people. And as you know, our age uh, group is getting older and older um, and older people like to travel. And what we're looking at is that we know Good point. 10, between 10,000 and 40,000 people out of those 3 billion are going to experience a medical situation. So that means roughly 75,000 to 300,000 times in a year, aviation somewhere is going to experience that problem. We don't know where, we don't know when, we have no idea. But what we can now do is we can combine health monitoring for an aircraft, we can, can add it with our health monitor, the same system that we have that we're currently going to be putting out to the market is not just capable of giving fuel savings, uh, engine condition monitoring. Um, we can now do health monitoring for a patient. You yeah. add all of that up and say we're GADS compliant with iCal, I'm, I think we have a winning combination on our hands. You know, Barney, I didn't think about it until you just brought it up. But, you know, right now we're all around the world, especially in North America, we have a demographic problem, a health, aging. Uh, we need, we're coming up with a better ways to take care of an aging population. So it only makes sense that if we've got that problem on the ground, we're going to have that problem in the air. So in a lot of ways, star navigation is flying, pardon the pun, but flying right into a, a major demographic health issue and Absolutely. aging population that that star is going to be at the forefront of it. it may, there are going to be other companies on the ground and they're all fighting for it on the ground, hundreds of companies, but star could potentially be 
one, the only or one of a very small group of companies that's dealing with the problem in the air. That's, that's huge. Now that you put it that way and good on you that you brought it up because I never thought about that way. And I don't think anybody at home has thought about that way. And it's patented, George. Barney, fantastic, buddy. We'll leave it right there. <laughs> I think that's, that's, that's everything that we, that, uh, that you need to tell us here. So we're looking forward to medevac, looking forward to, you know, quick summary. Barney's saying that uh, they've broken through from simulation to real world. Uh, waiting for some approvals, and we've already got uh, uh, potential distributors in different territories are already inquiring about purchasing rights for territories. And according to Barney, we'll see our first territory sales in 2018. So that'll be great because this is what everyone's been waiting for. Thanks for joining us, Barney. Any last words? Well, uh, leave it to you. George, you said it all, and I just got to say I'm really happy to be here. And one other thing, always, sure. always, thank you to the shareholders that have supported us over the years, we're here. Yep, yep, and uh, I'll say the same thing to all the shareholders at home too. They're, they're very loyal, even I get, even I get uh, email, even I get direct messages on different social media platforms and they're definitely dedicated to, to, uh, to Star Navigations. And they've waited a long time and it sounds like things are yeah. finally gonna start fr turning to fruition. So thanks for joining us today, Barney. Thanks, George, it's a pleasure. You've been watching Barney Lash. He's the newly appointed Vice President of Sales over at Star Navigation Systems. Mind you, he's been there for eight years at a high-level capacity, so he's already hitting the ground running. Star Navigation trades on the CSC on the stock symbol SNA, and for our friends in the U.S. on the OTCQB under SNAVF. If you want more information about the company, get to Agoracom, punch in the company's name or stock symbol, get to the hub, get to the profile, Everything's there for you, and watch our interviews with now that we've had with Baraf, Janaid, and Al Barney. That tells me a lot when the company is giving you access to all the important people at the company. It means they like what they're doing and they're confident. So, uh, you know, make sure you check that out. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Having a great day, and we'll see you soon.